My name is Dr. Keith Kakami. Again, I'm a first year med internal medicine student. So, I'm presenting MK, a 47 year old female, a widow who is a minor. She's born again and stays in Chigo. She presented with uh, a two weeks history of dry cough and progressively worsening dyspnea. So NK is a 47-year-old female, HIV seronegative, with a 23-year history of working in a, in a stone query. She presented with two weeks history of dry cough associated with progressively worsening dyspnea. She was well until one and a half years ago when she, she developed intermittent episodes of dry cough, uh, which was occasionally productive of mucoid non blood stain sputum. This cough was worsened by exposure to dust, cold weather, and strong fumes, and there was no diurnal variation. It was managed in the peripheral clinics as an allergic airway disease on antihistamines and occasional steroids. This cough was associated with progressively worsening dyspnea. Initially, she was able to go to work. Uh, gradually, she developed exertional dyspnea, and now she has dyspnea at rest. No orthopnea, no paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and no low limb swelling. She also reports significant weight loss uh, of over 20 kilograms and reduced appetite. However, there is no history of evening fevers and night sweats. Uh, in the review of other systems, uh, remarkably, she reported occasional mild headaches. There was no history of focal weakness, uh, no seizures uh, or alimentation. And in musculoskeletal system, there was no history of joint pains, no joint swellings no muscle weakness, and no muscle pain. In the past medical history, she has had multiple admissions with similar symptoms in the peripheral clinics. Uh, so far this year, she has had three admissions, and they treat her as allergic airway disease. Uh, most of the time, the dry cough improves, but the dyspnea persists. She has been assessed for TB four times, and at, uh, in all the times, she's turned negative. No history of childhood respiratory illnesses like asthma or eczema or rhinosinusitis, and no history of drug allergies. And uh, she had resorted to using herbal medications as well because she was seeing no improvement and had actually resorted to prayers. Uh, past surgical history was unremarkable. In the past obstetric and brain history, she is a mother, she is a mother to six children who were delivered by a spontaneous vaginal delivery with hope of a traditional birth attendant. Uh, one died perinatally and three died before their first birthday. And so far she has two children. She's single, separated from the husband who eventually died. Uh, has six children, like I've told you, two children who are now adults, 27 and 23 years. And four of, uh, four of the children died before their first birthday. She's a third born in a family of eight. Her siblings are all well. The mother is alive and well, but the dad died of unknown illnesses. There's no familiar history of asthma, lung cancer, or any other chronic lung disease. She stays in Chigo, in Tebe, and she's worked in this stone quarry for 23 years, where she's been involved in processing aggregate stones uh, by heating larger stones. She was born Catholic and recently converted to the born again faith. And of late, she's unable to work and spends most of her time at home due to the debilitating symptoms. No history of smoking. However, she cooks using charcoal and firewood. And then there's no history of alcohol use. So the patient thinks she's suffering from asthma all along. And her concerns are now that she's unable to work. And since her since admission, which is a month over a month ago, she's, she's obstinate dependent. She expects to get well and return to her work. So in summary, I've presented NK with a 47-year-old HIV seronegative, previous stone query minor, who presented with intermittent episodes of dry cough, progressively worsening this year for one and a half years, with significant weight loss. No history of orthopnea, paroxysmonic tunnel dyspnea, and screening for TB so far has been negative. So, our impression at that point, we thought of anemoconiosis uh, as a result of chronic exposure to silica in, in the stone query. We thought also of COPD, adult onset asthma, she presented with wheezing and dry cough. Uh, we, we still thought that we, 
given that diagnosing TB is still a challenge in our country, we still thought it, is, uh, it could be TB, and we thought of lung malignancy. However, given that she didn't have hemoptysis, uh, it was uh, lowest on our list of differentials. So when we examined her, this was a middle-aged lady, moderately wasted, in moderate respiratory distress. She was a febrile with no pile of mucous membranes. There was no finger clubbing, no cyanosis, no oral sores. She had no lymphadenopathy, and the Pamaton sign was negative. Her BMI was 16.9, and ECOG was 3. So the vitals, significantly, uh, she was uh, saturating between 85 and 90 on room air, and then she also had a tachycardia. In the respiratory system, she was tachypneic with a respiratory rate of 30 breaths per minute, and by now we put her on oxygen. Uh, she started saturating at, at 95%. The chest was symmetrical, no chest deformities. The trachea was deviated to the right. She had uh, diffuse bronchi, you know, the lung fields, and she had coarse croppers in the right infraxillary region. And then in the CVS, her pulse rate was uh, 107, regular, normal volume. So other systems were essentially normal. So here, uh, by now, we are thinking that this is uh, probably interstitial lung disease, again, as a result of her chronic exposure to silica, which was com complicated by bronchopneumonia. We also thought of COPD, uh, given that, uh, again, her chronic exposure in the query uh, could predispose her to COPD, and we thought this could be an exacerbation, the same as adult onset asthma, and we still wanted to rule out PTD. So, we requested for some investigations, and uh, CBC essentially was normal. The liver function tests were okay, and the renal function tests. We screened her for TB, we induced sputum this time, and it was also negative. And then this is high test X-ray, which showed uh, homogeneous opacities in the hilar regions bilaterally, and uh, heterogeneous opacities in the lower lung zone. So a chest CT scan was done, and again, you can see uh, the patchy opacities in the hilar regions with uh, multiple thick bands. There are other investigations we would want to do, uh, like spirometry, to find out whether it's actually asthma or COPD, or it's an overlap of asthma and COPD, and also we'd want to do bronchoscopy uh, to, to rule out uh, uh, lung malignancy. But for, for now, she's been oxygen dependent, and so we've been unable to do this. So the treatment she's received so far mainly is oxygen therapy. Uh, we nebulized her with salbutamol, and then she continued using inhaled salbutamol, 400 micrograms uh, PRN. We treated her bronchial pneumonia with IV ceftriaxone and azithromycin. So she improved slightly, but she's still oxygen dependent, and uh, she awaits the bronchoscopy and spirometry. And for now, we have started pulmonary rehabilitation. She has started exercising her upper limbs, and she has received nutrition education. Thank you for listening.